When I was eight years old, I had my first English class. And I remember asking myself, okay, if I, a Brazilian girl, am learning verbs and nouns in English, what do they study? At first, came to me a very ecological answer. Well, if I am learning English, they are learning Portuguese. For a minute, I found myself an important person for knowing Portuguese. Until I asked my teacher and she said they learned Spanish. I was disappointed. Some years later, this question came to me again. This time, I thought a bit different. I had just discovered that not only Brazil, but all other countries were also learning English. So I felt sorry for the English teenagers because they should probably study all those languages too, right? Once again, I was wrong. They still learn Spanish. And French, by the way. As the time went by, I started to notice little by little how English was part of my daily life. Not only in school with the English classes, but also in the daily words that we use, such as milkshake, notebook, or even those cases we prefer to use the English version. Who here has ever bought a hot dog instead of a cachorro quente? But another thing that also surprised me was that English is the main language of entertainment. A large amount of films, series, songs, YouTube channels that we consume were and still are produced in English. And that is not because they are all producing only one language, but because they are all producing one main country. The biggest film production companies such as Walt Disney Studios, Warner Bros. Entertainment, DreamWorks, they are all in the United States. Not gonna lie, sometimes English is also preferred. I could be doing this whole presentation in Portuguese, but here I am. Once again, English has won for me. In this globalized world that we live today, we got so used to the use of language that when something doesn't come from this little English bubble, we tend to see something different, something that isn't normal, or even something uncomfortable. Most of my friends can name a list of singers that are either from the United States or the United Kingdom. But when it comes to national singers, they tell me they don't like Brazilian songs. And when I ask the reason for it, they cannot really give me one. Last year, my father told me that we were going to the cinema to watch a Korean movie. And the first thing that came to my mind was, oh god, a Korean movie? Some months later, the film Parasite was the first non-language language movie to win the Oscar for best film in history. Sometimes we're just afraid of the new, because as it isn't something that we are used to, we think that we won't like it, so we don't give a chance to it. And we shouldn't feel guilt or regret about it, because it's just our cognitive biases working on our brains. It's a natural response. When it comes to language, when we don't give a chance to listen to a different song or watch a different movie that we're not used to, we're also not giving a chance to culture. This image is from a Brazilian indigenous group called Purubora. They live in the state of Rondonia, in the north region of Brazil. Their only village is called Aperoi, and they are still fighting for recognition of the area as an indigenous territory. The first registers of this group are from the beginning of last century. And since then, very few studies have been done about them. So everything about their culture, their religion or their language has been passed on from generation to generation through the dialogue. This year, due to COVID-19, they lost Mr. Eliezer Kurubara one of the three last people who spoke their own language. At an interview, the Purubara said that the only language they could speak at work was Portuguese. And it has been like this since the beginning of colonization in Brazil. In the last five centuries, the number of indigenous languages in Brazil went from over 1,200 to less than 200. Purubara and so many other languages are today in danger of extinction. This is a map showing the difference between extinct languages in 1945 and 2018. There are today 7,000 spoken languages. Some years ago, it was predicted that until the end of the century, we will lose over half of this number. Nowadays, it is estimated that about 90% of those languages will have gone extinct by the next century. You might be as scared as I was when I first saw those numbers, and I get it, until seven months ago, I thought that Latin was the only language extinct in the world. Well, the idea of having few spoken languages might sound good. It would be easy to share knowledge, socialize with other groups, travel around the world. 
When I first noticed that English was one of the main languages spoken in the world, I was so happy that I could speak it because now, with English and the internet by my side, I can make friends from any place. But at the same time, it felt like I was betraying my own country. Last year, I had my first exchange to Germany. And I remember that I spent hours and hours talking to my host sister all about Brazil. I showed her songs, taught her the names of food, animals. She was fascinated. And as our language was different, our culture was also different. Culture is in constant change and development. One culture can be influenced by another one, as well as it can influence others. But with globalization, this phenomenon became even faster. At the same time that it, globalization has made so many things possible and brought so many new opportunities, it has brought some bad consequences too. In school, we learned that globalization can lead to the loss of culture, and indeed, some societies can influence other societies' culture more than others. This phenomenon is not equal nor balanced. But what they don't tell us is that the solution can be actually easier than we think. When we learn a language, we are also learning a new culture. Humans have shared to their languages songs, myths, rituals, ex stories, experiences. And it has been like this since always. Everything is somehow related to language. Some years ago, I decided to learn German, and it has been a crazy adventure since then. All the process I went through with English, I had to repeat with German. So I had to do with verbs, nouns, adjectives, grammar. But I also had a lot of fun by doing this. I learned some big words like, well, I won't try to pronounce them because my English is not that my pronunciation is not that good yet, but I also had a lot of fun and laugh a lot with memes like this one. And more important, I learned a bit about our culture too. I listened to songs, I watched movies, played new games, and even discovered some fun facts as well. Did you know that Einstein worked at the Oktoberfest in Germany as an electrician when he was a teenager? But in order to learn about a culture, we don't necessarily need to learn a new language. What about our own mother language? About our culture, our city, or our country? My mother once asked me whether I was proud of being born in Olinda, a city in the northeast of Brazil. And I answered her without hesitating. Well, of course I am, why wouldn't I? At first, I didn't really understand her question because to me, it was pretty obvious that wherever we are born, we shouldn't take it as a burden but as a privilege. I may have studied about two languages and about their culture, but I never forgot about where I came from. I am Brazilian, and to say the least, Portuguese is a beautiful language. It may be a little hard, I admit. My grades in English are sometimes better than mine in Portuguese. But we have so many incredible writers who wrote incredible books like Machado de Assis, Ruti Rocha, or Monteiro Lobato. And we also have so many incredible singers, like Luiz Gonzaga, Chico Barque, or Seu Jorge. Brazil is a beautiful country with an incredibly rich culture. I've lived in three cities throughout my life, each one in a different place from Brazil. I danced Prevo and ate couscous in Recife. I also learned a bit about Literatura de Cordel, a typical type of poem from there. In Rio de Janeiro, I watched the football match at Maracanã Stadium. I visited so many museums and took so many pictures at Copacabana's beach. More recently, living in Curitiba, I discovered that some words in the south of Brazil go by different names. Boy, they call guri or pia instead of menino. Pencil case, they call penal instead of pen of estojo. I even tried drinking shimahão, but I'm not a fan of tea. In some years, there will be less spoken languages than it is today. And the same will happen with culture. So why don't we help our own country to fight against it? We don't need to limit ourselves with English or any other second language that we learn. Culture is everywhere. 
We just need to let go of our fears or prejudices, get out of our comfort zone, and we'll discover so many new and incredible things. It can be a place that you visit, it can be a new type of food or song, or it can be a new type of film too. It can be a new sport or the story of a person or a place. And while we'll be having so much fun doing this, we'll be also helping the world. Thank you.